There's some deer scat. Yeah. Right there, actually. <laughs> okay. This week on Kentucky Afield, we're in the blind with Chad's daughter, Campbell, and her youth mentor on her very first deer hunt. Look at it. Next, we'll take a look at what the department is doing to control wild pigs. So I text my camera to drop the door. Then, this deer season, you can help out a family in need. We'll show you how. If we can get these extra deer, why not put them to good use? It's all next on Kentucky Afield. It's a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum loaded with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> first say Leo. Yeah, we're here to get the keeper. Here it goes. Boom! Oh, oh. Oh. Wow, that happened. and welcome to Kentucky Afield. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Every fall, Kentucky has a two-day youth-only deer season, and that is a perfect time to mentor a young hunter. My daughter should be home from school any minute. I'm gonna step inside and surprise her today with our very first deer hunt. So Campbell, you know, for the last couple years, you've been asking me about wanting to deer hunt. Sit up here. I want to talk to you for a second. You've been wanting to deer hunt for a long time, right? Yeah. And every single year when you've wanted to go deer hunting, you've had a volleyball tournament. Well, this year, you know, because of coronavirus, you don't have a volleyball tournament. You don't have a volleyball. You're going to be out of town. But I'm out of town. So I feel really bad because I know you've been wanting to deer hunt, and unfortunately, I can't take you. And I really want to be there for your first hunt, but I don't want to hold you back either. So what if I told you I got you something? What if I told you I got you this? You know what that is? That is your license and it's your deer tags. And I got you a new hunting jacket. This is pretty. Yep. And some cool. hunter some hunter's orange and a new shirt. And guess what? I can guess what? What? Miss Rachel, who you've been going and shooting with. We're gonna squeeze as slow as possible, okay? Miss Rachel is going to take you this Sunday and you get to go on your very first deer hunt. Are you excited? Yeah. And I will be getting home right about the time you guys get out of the stand. So if you get a deer, I'll be able to come there and help you out. Yeah. Well, Rachel, I can tell you that Campbell is pretty excited to be going deer hunting with you. Chad, that's awesome. I've known Campbell a long time and I'm so grateful you asked me to mentor her for a first hunt. And I'm just as excited as she is to get out there. Campbell, are you excited? Today's the day. Yeah. And we're going on what? What are we doing today? We're going on my first hunt. First hunt, and what are yeah. we going to try to harvest today? Um, a deer. Yeah, a deer. Mm -hmm. Taking a kid on a hunt is not only a fun experience for the kid, it's also a great teaching opportunity. Exactly. There's some deer scat. Yeah. Right there, actually. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and the ground blind's right around the corner here. Sound good? Yeah. You ready? Yes. Good. So if you look through that, 
press this button, it'll show you a yardage at the bottom because the screen's blocking it for me. It says 371. That's all the way down to that red tree. So obviously we're not going to shoot that far, but I think the deer will be feeding on the food plot on this end, so I would think that we would get a close shot, like 100 or closer. Yeah. We got a good wind tonight. I feel confident. No, we need a good scent checker. You can really see what the wind's doing. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I see a deer out there, Campbell. There's a deer walking up right now. Oh gosh. You're okay, she's walking to us. I see her in here. You see her? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to zoom in or anything? No, this is perfect. If you look at his head, it's a butt buck Campbell. Can you tell? Oh, uh, yeah. It's up to you, but I think maybe we can wait for a bigger doe. What do you think? Yeah, let's yeah. wait. Yeah. Okay. But what we want to do is shoot just like that deer is standing right now. You can look through your scope and practice. We'll keep our finger off the trigger. He might be cornering away a tiny bit. But he's pretty much broadside. Yeah. That's how we want to shoot a deer, okay? Okay. Hey, Campbell, there's a little squirrel. See him? Oh, I see him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> That's funny. Campbell, there's another deer. It's way at the very back of the field. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's a big doe. But she's still really far away. It might be 300 yards. So she's far. Yeah. There's a squirrel with her. Yeah. She looks fat and happy out there. She's eating, but hopefully she'll eat this way towards us. It looks like a big doe. Look through your scope. See if you can find her. There's a butt bug. Here it comes. Go ahead and ease your safety off. It'll be in range once it's to the top of the hill. Butt bugs in the way, so we're just gonna wait for them to feed around in that food plot. This is kind of the key is keeping your nerves at bay. Having patience, okay? Okay. Just like we practice on the range. We're gonna take good shots. And when it's right, we're just gonna slowly squeeze the trigger and stop. It looks like just a couple more steps that way, and you might have a shot right behind her shoulder, okay? Okay. She's turning. Alright, you feel good. You on her yeah. still? Yep. All right, put it right in that pocket of her front shoulder. Just slowly squeeze the trigger like we practiced, okay? Okay. Good shot, Campbell. Did I get it? Yeah, you got her. Listen to her, listen to her. Just wait and listen. You got her really good. You got her really good. Awesome. <laughs> you got her really good. Well, Rachel, I was just getting back into town when I got a call from Campbell and told me she had just had shot, and man, she was excited. She definitely was excited. Hello. Hey, Dad. Hey, hon. Hey, guess what? What? We got one. You got one? Yeah. That is so exciting. Yeah. Well, Chad, as soon as Campbell shot, I was watching with my binoculars. I knew she made a great shot and that the blood trailing was probably gonna be a pretty great learning experience for her. We started her right at the hit site. She was the first to find blood right away. Here, I see blood. We talked about where the deer went into the brush at and she led us right to it. There it is. <laughs> Way to go, girl. Good job. That's a big old doe. Well, Rachel, obviously it was an experience that I would have liked to have been there for. I'm so happy that you were able to take her. Tell me a little bit about what mentoring a hunt meant to you. Well, I mean, it's really special. You know what your first deer's like. I think I was shaking more than Campbell was as soon as she shot. I couldn't get my nerves in order. For year after year, Campbell's wanted to go. We haven't been able to put it together. And you stepped right in and you've made a lasting memory for her. So I can't thank you enough. Well, it was a lasting memory for me too, Chad. It's something that I think everybody would enjoy if they just take a kid or an adult out hunting.
Hi, I'm David Yancey. I'm a wildlife biologist with, uh, with the department and we're at, uh, at our Salado Wildlife Education Center today. We thought this would be a good time to talk about uh, deer and deer hunting in Kentucky. What's different this year is that we had a record September. Uh, we had the best September deer harvest that we've ever had. And we think there's a, a couple of reasons for that. One, it was really, really spectacular weather. And then on top of that, this was the second season that we've had our expanded crossbow season. So for those two reasons, we think that's probably what, uh, what led to, the, to our record take. And, and what was it? Normally we take uh, about 5,000 or so in September, and this year we took uh, around almost 8,000. Coming up shortly in, uh, on the, I guess, the deer hunting menu in Kentucky will be our modern firearm season. And that's the, the time of the year when the largest, the single, you know, largest number of hunters take to the woods. Uh, it's also when, you know, therefore when we take, you know, the greatest number of deer in, in the shortest amount of time. So we'd like to remind you to review the regulations before you go out, either online or in the hunting guide. Check your equipment, make sure your scope is still on, your rifle's still on, adjust if necessary. By all means, if you know if you're hunting from an elevated stand, be very careful with that. Check everything. Check the you know the nuts, the bolts, the straps. Make sure you use your safety harness above all else because the number one hunter safety accident in Kentucky is tree stand falls. Successful is nice, but first safety. If you are uh, fortunate enough to harvest one or more deer this year and you have an interest in, in maybe knowing how old that deer is uh, or, or was, uh, new this year we have uh, a program, We've, we're going to have 12 drop-off freezers around the state uh, and if you'd like you can submit the, the head from that deer and uh, we have some things we'd like to get for it for, for checking deer herd health but as a benefit to you, we will, uh, we will let you know afterward uh, how old that deer was. If you're interested in that, for location information and directions to those drop-off freezers, you can go to our website at fw.ky.gov, or if you want to talk to someone about it, you can call 1-800-858-1549. This is the time of year that many Kentuckians take to the woods in search of deer. But if you happen to see a wild pig, make sure you call and report it because trapping them is the most effective way to remove them. So Terry, we're out here in Henry County again, pretty close to a location where you trapped pigs a few years ago and showed us some of your eradication efforts. Give me an update on how the pigs are doing here in the state of Kentucky. Well, we've had a lot of success in Kentucky Pigs are at the lowest numbers they've been in the last decade. We've got an aggressive eradication campaign in partnership with Wildlife Services. To have a trapping effort, you have to get a phone call first. And these phone calls are not coming from the people that a lot of people would expect it to be. These are hunters and landowners that are saying, man, having pigs on my property is no good. So Mark, wild pigs and corn growing do not go hand in hand. That do doesn't work well, no. <laughs> a lot of damage really quick. So tell me a little bit about what you've experienced with wild pigs here in Henry County. We had a problem, it was down the river, they started coming in, didn't really know at first what it was, and then it got to getting worse and worse. And you're talking about just literally knocking they the stalks They just actually down. come in, knock the stalks down, and just knock the corn off. It looks like a bush hog went over it when they come in, and before it started catching some of them, they were getting like a half acre a night, just one group. They were just cleaning the fields. They really mess up hunting opportunities as well. Wild pigs displace our native wildlife species. They displace deer and turkey. They outcompete them for food sources, especially acorns. You think you're gonna hunt near a white oak tree and have a successful hunt, and then all you see are pigs. For a corn producer, did you have a piece of property that were either total losses, or you just said, hey, I'm not gonna raise corn there anymore? We didn't have total losses, but it was starting to get to that point, and then that's when we contacted the Fish and Wildlife to come in. We'll do a landowner visit, we'll look for damage, and we'll set cameras and bait up in the areas where there's sign and monitor the situation. And if we can get pigs on bait, then we'll set a trap. We used to have traps that had trip wires and rooting sticks, and they were would catch maybe half of the group of pigs. Pigs live in sounders. So what we'll do is we'll try to catch that entire sounder. We're not really exactly sure how pigs hit the landscape. We think people brought them in for hunting opportunities. You know, they're not that easy to hunt, and if you go out and you shoot a couple of these pigs, they get smart fast. That's what I was told. In fact, I was told by Fish of My Life, don't shoot them. 
don't scatter them. Let them come in and let them catch them in the traps. You just said the most important thing is don't shoot, call, because you really want to get a trap out that you can remotely trigger. And that's how we've caught the last group of pigs that we think we've got here in the landscape in Henry County. We're caught using a remote trap, and that's really the way to do it. Terry, we've come in here today and this has been a huge success for us. We've captured what may be one of the last remaining sounder groups in Henry County. Right now, we're getting ready to test a boar for diseases. Wild pigs carry swine, brucellosis, and pseudo rabies, and they are not found in uh, domestic swine in the state, and we're trying to keep that from happening. So we're gonna test the blood samples for those diseases. So Dax is gonna be doing a heart stick to draw blood. Notice we do have PP on, latex gloves and glasses to protect ourselves from diseases. I typically take four vials of blood and we'll spin those down to eight cryo vials. We've been in Henry County now for, what, five years, four or yeah. five years? And yeah. It's, a, it's actually been a really rewarding experience here to, to realize we've made a huge difference for the landowners. People with crops and soybeans and corn who are having trouble with the pigs just destroying their property. So Mike, you're a farmer here in Henry County. Yes. What was some of the worst damage you've seen? Back in 2016, they wiped probably 80% of a field out over there overnight. So oh there's like goodness. probably 15 pigs in there eating. You've also seen damage to some of your neighbors in their yard. They just root their yards up too. Have you seen that as well, right? Yes, they just took like a big strip in their yard and just, I mean, just like you plowed it or something. It's estimated that swine in the United States creates almost $2 billion worth of damage to crops and property. This is exciting, thinking we've got the last sounder, thinking that we've eradicated the largest population of pigs in Kentucky. A lot of sleepless nights, but been well worth the effort. And again, rewarding to know that we're helping people in the county. So we also do a DNA or genetic sampling on these pigs and it's to get a database to, to hopefully figure out where these pigs are coming from and what strain of pig or what genetics they come from. You know, these pigs may come from North Carolina, they may come from Tennessee, and we're taking these samples to kind of figure that out. These boars like we have here, they typically will roam for miles looking for sows to breed with. They cover a lot of ground and are really hard to track. These traps have been really successful in getting rid of all these pigs. Traps reset. So that's it, our trap is set. Tell me about why you chose this particular location. Typically, if you can find a wallow, you can put out some corn and you'll find the pigs. Now that you've got it set, you'll back out of here and you'll watch this thing for a few days. And what happens if a couple pigs come in? I've got a camera up here in the tree. It's motion sensored. A pig will go into the trap. My camera will sense that pig and take a picture. And then that picture is then relayed to my phone. So I text my camera to drop the door and... Bam, you drop the gate and you know you've got them. Once they're in there, they'll finish up their feeding and they'll pretty much be there whenever you get here. That's right, they'll be here waiting. It's high tech, but it's the way to go. I mean, it's been a true success story. While setting in the tree sand this deer season, if you get an opportunity to take a second doe, especially if you're in a zone one county, you may want to consider this. We set up this morning on this on this field, knowing that there were a lot of deer in here. What we couldn't tell is this this field. It's got a little bit of a ridge line in the dead middle. It caused us some issues because as we sat down here, we really couldn't tell how many deer were moving across from us. We sat here till about nine o'clock. Finally, decided to stand up and look. Literally saw a deer coming through, could only see its head. And as it walked up on this backstop across from us, we were able to get a shot. There were two of them. 
The second one ran back and stopped. I'm excited. I'm going to donate these deer to hunters for the hunger. You know, the holidays are right around the corner. And these stay right here in our local community, so we don't want anyone to go hungry throughout Thanksgiving and Christmas. So we're going to get these donated. Let's go check out what we got. Looks like we've got a medium sized doe here. This is a, gonna be a perfect size, really good eating for hopefully several needy families right here in the uh, Kentucky Louisville communities. I'm really excited about giving this deer to Hunters for the Hungry. I've made a donation each of the last couple years and this is gonna be absolutely perfect for what I was wanting today. bit about how the process with Hunters for the Hungry works. Okay, so a hunter takes illegally, harvests the deer, they get the confirmation number, of course, bring it into a, a processor. We always recommend that they call the processor first to make sure that one, if it's early season, that they're taking deer mm -hmm. at this time, and then two, that they haven't met their quota yet. Mm -hmm. We give each processor a quota for the year, mm -hmm. and uh, they work up to that number. So call before you take your deer. So here with Joe Long. Joe, you've been uh, working with Hunters for the Hunger for quite some time now. Uh, yes, we have, Chad. Uh, probably at least six or seven years now. So you get an allotment and you process deer, and who picks up those deer for, from you guys? Local food banks, uh, like Dare to Care. Okay. And you provide everything in the ground form, right? Uh, yes. When a deer comes in, we will thoroughly inspect it to make sure that it's uh, fit for someone to eat. I know Kentucky Hunters for the Hungry only choose select processors that they've been recommended. Yes. So, and you guys, when a deer comes in, if it, if it doesn't look like something's right, you just say no. Then right. they go, well, I, then just donate to Hunters of the Hungry. What's your next response gonna be? Uh, that it's not fit to eat and that uh, we'll, we'll dispose of it for you. How big is this program? Last year, we did uh, 1,468 deer, which, uh, a deer, a deer will give us about 40 pounds of ground venison, mm -hmm. and from that 40 pounds of ground venison, uh, it'll feed uh, about 200 meals. So that's over 300,000 meals right so there. If we start doing the, the quickly doing the math here, you're talking about two, 2,000 deer, and you're looking at 200 meal. We're talking 400,000 meals. Right, that's my goal for this year. Is, in the state of Kentucky, the state of Kentucky. hunters are gonna provide through donations of, of, their, of, their, of their harvest. Right, it's a win-win for everybody. It's a win for the farmers because if they've got depredation permits, mm -hmm. we can take them. Mm -hmm. uh, zone one counties are you know, they're wanting to get the deer off of there, zone two as well. Mm -hmm. So if we can get these extra deer that's, you know, that's causing damage, why not put them to good use? If you're a hunter and you go, you know what, I'd I wanna help out this program. There's a couple ways you can do it. First off, you can make a financial contribution, right? Right, right off our website. Right off the website, and that will help pay a processor to process another deer. Right. Two, you can take a legally harvested deer and reach out to a processor and drop it off. Right. And is there any other ways they can help out? Yes, well, they can actually pay for the processing if they want to. Okay. But typically, uh, that's what our organization does, is pay for the processing. Okay. So. And you guys partner with the Department of Fish and Wildlife, uh, as well as some other organizations mm -hmm. to help raise funds for this, right? Right. Department of Fish and Wildlife, of course, uh, Kentucky Farm Bureau, Feeding Kentucky. We have a lot of partners, a lot of sportsman's clubs, uh, a lot of individuals that help. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic program. I appreciate all your oh, thank help you. and, and for coming in and explaining the program to us. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Check out the impressive spread on this beautiful buck taken by Dorothy Davis. This buck had a 22 inch inside spread. Here is Erica Berry with a nice buck and it was her very first deer taken in Winchester, Kentucky. Here we have a really nice buck taken by Liz Lewis in Jefferson County. Nice deer. Check out this really impressive largemouth bass caught by Natalie Newton in Nelson County, Kentucky. Here we have a great photo of a beautiful buck taken by Hudson Pole in Benton, Kentucky. Nice deer. 
Blake Arthur with his very first year, a nice impressive buck from Washington County. Congratulations. Tanner Renfro's very first deer with his bow was a nice impressive buck from Marshall County. Congratulations. Here we have Hunter Bingham with an eight point buck that he took in Estill County, Kentucky during the rifle season. Here we have Katie Sue Wilhoyt with a nice eight point buck taken in Owen County. Nice job. This week is your last chance to sight in that deer rifle, especially if you haven't shot it since last deer season. And remember, Hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.